Okay, you know, I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Yep, that is the lead 2020 presidential hopeful on the Democratic ticket. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Okudowski of We Are Change the Rug. A lot of important news to cover today. Specifically, we are going to be talking about all the latest geopolitical news coming from the Middle East. We're also going to be talking about the deteriorating relationship between China and the United States and how historically, when there is economic upheaval and major economic downturn, how that is correlated with conflict amongst nations and one thing that you should really consider and think about is that career politicians are extremely bad servants of the people they are more puppets and actors of the special interest that they serve while providing you a larger disservice just examine the absolute horrible job that government has done with the crisis in 2020 and now understand that these are the same people dealing with complex geopolitical issues while being armed with the latest nuclear weapons capabilities. That uh, should be very unsettling for a lot of people. And before we get into the extreme poverty that is going to be dramatically increasing from here, as well as the tensions between China and the United States rising, we wanted to remind you that as an independent media organization that speaks about such important contexts, that we are heavily censored, shadow banned, and 100% demonetized because we talk about these issues. And because of that, I have to implore you to please sign up on our email list. It costs you nothing. You get emails. We're going to be launching a special project that predominantly we're going to be communicating with you about on this email list. If you are already signed up, make sure to check your spam and promotions folder to make sure our emails are not caught in there. Click not spam, not promotion. This helps us out tremendously. Trust me with the project that we're going to be launching soon, you're going to be wanting to be able to get it first before anyone else. Again, just sign up on the email list. The link is in the description and comments down below. Now, a lot of important geopolitical news is happening. A lot of times it's overshadowed by the petty, stupid, domestic, racial divide and conquer agenda that you usually hear a lot about. But geopolitically, what happens in the world, especially with the United States, matters and it matters a lot especially with the latest announcements that we're getting today of a peace deal between israel and the united arab Emirates that officially opened up diplomatic ties between the two countries and is an official deal that stops the annexation of occupied land sought by the palestinians for further statehood this deal absolutely scraps the previous deal put together by Donald Trump's son-in-law, also known to some as a satanic evil creature, Jared Kushner. But that's beyond the point. Now, this is a win towards diplomacy, but we have to also understand that the UAE, the United States, and Israel previously have worked together and cooperated in other projects where they financed militants from radical forms of Islam in order to destabilize countries to push their joined geopolitical objectives. It wouldn't surprise me if Saudi Arabia joins this official diplomatic community, as of course they also worked very closely with the UAE, Israel, and the United States with their shared geopolitical objectives, predominantly against the Shiites in the region. Israel, by and large, has adopted a practice where they usually backed the Sunni factions in the Middle East and helped foster some of the conflict that has been unfolding all throughout the region. Now, this is some of the background information that you should understand when it comes to this unofficial alliance that is becoming more official by the day. Overall, diplomacy is a good thing. Is it such a great thing that Donald Trump should win the Nobel Peace Prize, as some people are suggesting? No especially with the larger context surrounding it. But I think we could definitely all agree that diplomacy should always be the answer. Now, it's also important to note that a lot of Palestinians are very critical of this deal, especially in a region 
that is always filled with conflict, as even some of the latest news we're getting, especially with turbulent Turkey that is expanding their oil and gas exploration, which is literally being met by French fighter jets that are trying to contest Turkey's encroachment on, quote, EU members. An incident that is leaving the Greek military to be put on high alert, as, of course, tensions between the nations rise, as, of course, that country is becoming desperate for natural resources. Turkey as a country has a very interesting foreign policy, as, of course, it has pissed off the United States, the West, and also the East, including countries like Russia, that they have been at odds with recently. Now, it does look like Turkey is warming up to Russia more than the West right now. But of course, Turkey is becoming more desperate as, of course, like many nations all throughout the world, it is also facing economic disasters. This could be why they're pushing the limit when it comes to energy exploration. And historically, just like any struggle for natural resources, it leads to nations fighting over it, which brings us to China, which is the perfect example of an empire that is trying to expand and also is very desperate for natural resources. This is why recently we have seen China at odds with India, with the United States, with Japan, with Australia, with the Philippines, since of course it wants to be the number one hegemonic power in the world. To do that, it can't be just a landlocked country. It needs a country with a lot of natural resources that it is desperate for that currently it does not have, especially for its aspirations for expanding. If China will be involved in a future conflict, it needs to make sure that the conflict happens away from its mainland. And that's why we've seen them build islands in the South Chinese Sea and even continuing to push to acquire islands near Japan that is disputed territory between the two nations. And this, of course, could be one of the clash points that happened between Japan and China. It could be in the South Chinese Sea, another major trade route where historically, if we look, it's usually trade routes that are the major places where battles are taking place. There is also another major dispute for territory between China and India that is aggressing and has already seen soldiers from both sides get killed over. The United States, which is trying to counter China, is of course sending more military might to the region. Right now also officially announcing that they are sending American nuclear capability stealth bombers to the Indian Ocean. There's also a U.S. delegation that plans on visiting Taiwan, another contested territory that China has been practicing many military drills of absolutely taking over and obliterating from the current Taiwanese government. If China was able to also acquire Taiwan, it could also set up a very important geopolitical position for them when it comes to any potential conflict in the future. This is why during World War II, we've seen so many of the conflicts being done on small islands in the Pacific, which you can't even see right now. The major battles in World War II happened on islands, defensive perimeters against the mainland, which of course China is desperately trying to acquire as much as they can. With also financial calamity and a huge major problem with the population, as of course China also had a one-child policy that had seen way too many males born over females, the Chinese empire is also facing a lot of major problems, specifically financial ones with this population decline. They're a nation that does not want to open up their borders to immigrants. They are strictly very anti-immigrant, which leaves them with not many options. As many people foresee, and even I've been saying, a potential conflict between China and the United States. And the financial situation around the world definitely does not help that out, as of course, many businesses, many financial opportunities, many of the small and middle class businesses that keep this country running have been absolutely wiped out, not by a sickness, but by government. It is leaving major cities in the United States absolutely ransacked. Major economic hubs like New York are shells of what they previously were before, as even New York State is ranked now the worst in economic outlook. And what did you expect as people are told to shut down and essentially go to Walmart? And that situation is, of course, worsening day by day, as even now, 
businesses are having their licenses revoked for not following the insane orders of politicians that literally make decisions as they go along, not based on any science at all. A big portion of this country is out of work, and there's no way that they will be getting their jobs back. The economic situation is only going to look bleaker from here. Major industries like the movie industry, the tourism industry, will not in a very long time recover or even maybe even exist in the future, and we are facing some severe economic ramifications that truly deserved to be examined. $26 trillion in debt, and what do we have for it? Do we have infrastructure that is actually operating and running efficiently and well and better than any other country since we spent so much money? Do we have a healthcare system that actually cures people and doesn't just profit off of their sickness? Do we have the best education system that actually teaches people skills to critically think, to do stuff well in this world, to actually operate as a functioning human being? No, we don't. $26 trillion. What do we have to show for it? Absolutely nothing. Where has that money gone? And if that shouldn't leave you pissed off and questioning about what's really happening in our society, I don't know what will. Again, economic calamities, economic downturns historically lead to conflict. It's one of the things that I'm closely paying attention to. This is an economic calamity that has been caused, manufactured, pushed by the government, caused by the government. And if they could be that evil, that purely maniacal, to create such devastation, what else do you think they're possible of doing? So yeah, paying attention to this stuff I think is very important, especially in this year. If you agree, share this video with your friends and family members. It's more important than ever. Surely, this is not going to be a video promoted by the special interests that are profiting off buying and selling politicians that are doing their bidding. Economic calamity, war, conflict benefits the very few, and those are the people pushing and promoting it and this is why we have to do everything in our power to push back against it remember it's not just left versus the right it's the ultra rich billionaire class versus you that's my take on it i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you love you guys stay tuned for more here on we are change.org